What is good? We're back. We got some fresh cracks. We got a full squad today. We're going to hit you with some dynasty running back rankings. Going to go top 13. We're going to hit you with them all at once from uh, the three of us. We got Big D, we got Big Co, we got Jay Waynes on the ones and twos. Um, we're going to go through them kind of by tiers, but we're going to throw them all out at once and then we're going to discuss and see if we could maybe get some guys to move some people around or if everybody's steadfast. And then we'll have a second show discussing kind of some the, the status of the RBs after that kind of top 12, top 13 as we see it. So, Big Co, how you doing? Doing well. Let's do it, man. Big D, how you doing? Living the dream, brother. Living the dream. Gladiator ready. Excited to talk about laser running backs. I got my uh, my Tony look going on. Shout out to Seinfeld. I don't know, George. I think we might need to do a little something more dangerous. How about rock climbing? <laughs> <laughs> All right, tier one. I'm going Bijan Brees. No Gibbs in that tier, so we'll discuss that. Tier two, Gibbs by himself, holding it down. Okay. Tier three, I'm going CMC and JT. All right, we got letters, letter names, tiers. Tier four, I'm going Kyron, ETN, HN, and Kenny Walker's kind of pulled off to the side, and we'll discuss. Next tier, we got Saquon and Jacobs. And the last tier, and this gets us over 12, we're going to 13, so the top 13. I got Trey Benson and Brooks going young guys there, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about all this as the show progresses and, and the hows and whys, and maybe people will need to be up and down. Big Co., where are you at with the top 12 running backs in the landscape of Dynasty Fantasy Football right now? Yeah, let's do a little bit of shuffling. Tier 1, I got Bijan and Brees. Um, you literally can flip a coin on either one of those guys in my eyes. Tier 2 is Christian McCaffrey by himself. Ooh. So you had Gibbs, I got McCaffrey. Racist. Tier Tier three, <laughs> Gibbs and Taylor. <laughs> tier four, A Chain and Williams. A Chain. And then tier five is ETN, Barkley, Kenny Walker, Brooks, and Benson. Double tier. All right. Got a big tier at the end. All right. I like it. I like it. Big D. Hit us up with your top twelve and we can we can get into the discussion. The minouche. Sounds sounds good. Yeah, I've got the the three uh, amigos in alphabetical order, uh, Bijan, Brees, and CMC. Ooh. We got JT, uh, Gibbs, and the Slippery Dolphin in Tier 2. ETN, Barkley, Kyron Williams, Ken Walker, Tier 3. Tier 4, we got Josh Jacobs, Trey Benson, Jonathan Brooks, brings me to 13. And 14, bonus, James Cook. Ooh, Cook, bonus. Cook, first first mention of Cook. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, we'll do a second show kind of discussing the, the, the landscape behind these guys right after this one. So make sure you're like, subscribed, all that jazz. So that comes right to your fingertips. Okay, let's start off with Gibbs and then we'll move to CMC because I think we, that those were our biggest differences kind of right off the rip. There you go. So nobody had Gibbs in the first tier with Brees and Bijan, right? Right. You could argue Gibbs had more explosive, better games down the stretch than Bijan. Oh, for sure. But what keeps him out of that top tier for you guys right now, Big Big Co? For me, the total all-encompassing bell cow usage of a running back kind of comes down to Bijan and Brees and Christian, and Christian McCaffrey as far as, you know, teams – lean on you to get the job done. They hand you the ball a bunch. They pass you the ball, pass you the ball a bunch, and they use you in the red zone. You get the goal line carries, et cetera, et cetera. We, we all anticipate growth from Gibbs this year. You can only see it. It, it was non-negotiable what happened last year for the Lions. He started out slow. He was a rookie. They were working him in. He crushed. He got better. There was a couple of games where he was absolutely ridiculous. He was the best player on the field. So, we don't. I don't think anybody that watched any football last year, or even if you can just read game logs and figure and look at the numbers, I don't think anybody thinks that Gibbs isn't going to take a step forward this year. Mm -hmm. He's not built to be that every down, all all the way across the field, all the way down from you know twenty to twenty. I'm you know I'm talking Brees and Bijan and Christian McCaffrey. They're goal line to goal line backs. Mm -hmm. You're not taking them off the field at all unless they need a breather. Right. And Gibbs may end up being that one day, but he's just he's not as uh, physically imposing. Now, he might be a little bit more electric in, in, in some instances. Brees Hall could definitely be 
as uh, electric too and 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 but just he's doing it at 225 pounds i just feel like gibbs is you know his total yards is going to be awesome this year his you could have a little touch step, rushing touchdown regression potentially you know you 10 touchdowns on 118 carries which regression is you know, fantastic but i believe he's going to get more catches and you know receiving yards are going to be ridiculous and the offense another level of offensive progression for the lions this year I mean, Gibbs is a beast. He really is. But he's not goal line to goal line necessarily all the time. He did do well rushing between five yards a carry. You know, yeah. can't, can't argue with that. Big D, what's your stance here on? Yeah, I mean, everything that you just, uh, Big Co just, you know, said, I can echo. I mean, week seven through um, seven through 17, I believe. Uh, or no, seven through 14. Uh, week seven through 14, he was the number three points per game running back kind of came back after that injury and and that's when he started scoring touchdowns there could be some regression but he also had the first quarter of the of the the season where you know he wasn't quite scoring them but for me it's just the the offense as a whole more so than Gibbs kind of what you said it's he's not the lead play there in my opinion there's there's a lot of great talent on on Detroit um there's a lot of great talent on San Francisco too but CMC is another level there wasn't a lot of talent on the Jets and Brees was still a monster, you know, um, and and then Bijan, of course, he's he's he's, you know, we'll see this season, but I, you know, I'm I'm pretty sure that having Bijan one is is there, he's going to prove a lot of us right this season. We'll we'll just say that, but but for me, I mean, Gibbs is is right there. He's just kind of he's kind of on the outlier, mostly because of the offense and and uh, you know, let's see if he can stay healthy for the season and and keep it keep it or relatively healthy right i mean running backs a hard position uh so there might be a, a strain here or there but uh but if he can if he can get that full game load and um start having game plans set for him then you know we might be talking um yeah i think this comes down to just everything you guys said that that he's not I, look i had him in the in tier one i moved him down move, i moved him back and forth so i gave him a tier by himself that's kind of why i put him over there by himself because I think he is um, just outside of those guys because he has another really good back in front of him who they're going to utilize. They're going to be a one-two punch. Can Gibbs certainly be an RB1 with more limited touches than the other two guys? 100%. He's very electric. And while the offense isn't going to necessarily be built around Gibbs, it's a really fun offense that operates at a high level does high level stuff and those are the offenses that I want to be involved in so it's not a slight on Gibbs really for me it's just that I know Bijan just was had the wrong setting and the wrong coach last year oh for sure um, and now all you've heard all off season long is how much they're going to be you know bringing Bijan into the fold of of you know Christian McCaffrey like usage which I think is certainly where that should be and so that's kind of why I, I, I put Gibbs in one tier kind of by himself outside of the tier of Bijan and Brees. Um, you look at the ADP, 2-2 uh, for, for Bijan, 2-7 for Brees, and 2-9 for Gibbs. And then CMC comes in at 2-11. So those guys are all filtering in as, as you go along in the second round. And I guess the other part of it is, is when I miss on Brees and Bijan, I'm not like immediately going to see if Gibbs is there. I'm, I'm usually, I usually start looking and seeing who else is around as well that, that kind of led into some of my decision there because i'm not immediately like oh well Brees and Bijan are going on gibbs is still there i'll i'll, I'll smash him regardless because it pretty much gets to a point where it's like i'm gonna probably smash Bijan or Brees regardless here and then i'm like oh gibbs yeah i want to take gibbs but is garrett wilson still here is right you know is this guy you know i'm not saying that i wouldn't take garrett wilson over either one of those two backs but you know i, I just that that, that kind of weighed into the, me splitting him into his own tier there. Yeah, and I, the, the wrap that up, I just I don't even know if Montgomery's in front of him anymore. Definitely no, but it's going to be a know, split bes- for sure. That's like beside him. The other two I, guys aren't splitting. Not at all. And that there's there's a difference right there. Right, and I you know I I think there was I forget who it was, but somebody was saying that he they thought that Brees might split a little more this year, and, and maybe he does split a little bit more this year. He should split a little bit more. Algier should take a little bit of Bijan, but. Those guys he should did, be. He will. Yeah, absolutely. He should he should see better fronts too. That's right. that's the other thing. I think the thing for Gibbs too is I just got a I got a price check his hands this this year. He had a lot of targets, but I think he was like at in that middle season like a seventy five percent catch rate or something something to that effect. Mm-hmm. Um, when we're talking elite, when we're talking top tier, I always use the stats seven week seven through fourteen for new viewers out there, just because it kind of gives me a. a 
a picture of what it was leading up to the playoffs kind of excludes the playoffs and it kind of takes the middle season. And so it's not, it's not the greatest indicator, but during this, during that stretch of time, CMC was at 82% and Brees was at 85% and Kamara also was at 85% just FYI. But, Mm -hmm. but uh, point being is that he had a lot of targets, but you know, whether that was on him, whether that was on golf, but that's kind of what I'm talking about is the offense is uh, great at home and kind of challenging on the road or, or not consistent on the road. And so that's for me is kind of where he's at. It's not necessarily the player. It's just the system currently. All right. So we got Gibbs, everyone a tier below elite, but love to have Gibbs, right? I'm oh, not, yeah. it's not, it's no slight on Gibbs. I'm, I'm ecstatic. If I have Gibbs on my team, I'm not really looking to move off of Gibbs by any means, unless I'm going to like this crazy full long rebuild and my team just stinks. No slight on Gibbs. I yeah. think he could easily be up there, uh, but for now, I'm, I'm I'm keeping him a tear down. It feels like Gibbs's value is lower in a startup than it is in an established league because if you have him and you've watched him, it's like you don't yeah. want to let him go. Right. Yeah. Hey, guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, and also our 2024 Rookie Draft Kit, complete with rookie rankings, ADP, and player pages, all for your pleasure. All right, well, let's talk about now how to deal with CMC a little bit because he's now that that older running back, elite production, um, had some slew of missed times there in Carolina for a little while, has come over to San Fran, has been pretty rock steady in that in that regard. But number one, you know, now we're getting I'm saying injury wise, oh, right. not missing a whole lot of time, um, you know, been nicked and banged and bruised, but played a lot. And it is, is a huge part of what they do, obviously. At 28, now you have to start considering, you know, when to draft him and how comfortable you are in drafting him. Big D, you had him in tier one. Big Co, you had him in tier two by yourself. Mm-hmm. What uh, what's your thoughts of how to deal with? an aging just apps i mean he's a league winning play you know you have christian mccaffrey you have a chance right well you know when we did the wide receivers we ended up you know kind of figuring out as we filtered through that my rankings were more leaning heavily towards like trade trade based values versus like points per game week one type stuff and obviously christian mccaffrey is like your one one overall redraft type player but crushed it last year 400 points in ppr leagues uh, you know he's 28 years old but you know two years ago when coming off his last injury uh you got the marshall fault quote going around where he's like hey well i don't maybe i'm not gonna you know spend all my time in the weight room i'm gonna go over here and do these uh you know get, other get flexible get, do the flexible stuff do more stretching and and you know be more fluid and so i don't know if that plays into that narrative there but it's just like he's 28 but can he do this for three more years? Can he do it for two more years? And if he does, maybe he doesn't, maybe, you know, he loses a step of speed and he doesn't break off that 60 yard rush, but like his mental capacity. And you know that like just his physical, his genes, where he's at mindset wise, he can still catch it. What if, if he slipped down into like the Kamara role, like Kamara got 18 fantasy points a game last year. He was nowhere near as electric as Christian McCaffrey mm-hmm. and on a boring offense. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, and, and obviously, and this really does have something to do with the contract. Not that I thought the Niners didn't want to keep him, but like they just kept him, mm-hmm. you know? So like yeah. you, you're, you're in the Niners for two or three more years. And even if he loses a step, he's got so much in that offense and in his personal mindset and his physical abilities, like his catching game prowess, like as a PPR monster, you know, he could, he's got two steps to lose to become Matt Forte. Mm-hmm. Does he want to physically do it? Does he want to handle Does he want to put his body through that for three or four more years? I don't know. But if he wants to, we all think I, you should think he can. Yeah. So that's, I got him in a tier by himself in tier two. If he was three years younger, he would be, I'd have him over Bijan and Brees because in this system with the Niners, why not? And what you, right. what you just saw last year was by far and away the, you know, the, the game breaking type running back, but that's, that's who you want. Right. Especially when you get the targets and the goal line and everything in between, he gets everything. Yeah. Big D why, why tier one? What, what's the thoughts on Christian here? You, you said it kind of at the top before Bitco started talking there, and it was just he's he's a he's a league winner, man. He's uh, you know he was healthy for 
last season. I don't know if that's for the first time in a while, where he, meaning that he didn't miss any games. I can't remember if he did the year before, but he was good the year before um, too. Yeah, and and I think that part of that is just the scheme that he's playing in too. Like, I know we always want to talk about the top talent and and who they are, but we just got done talking about. Bijan and how he's going to be utilized differently. Well, McCaffrey's already was already good when he was on the Panthers, and he is just absolute dynamite on on the Niners. Unfortunately, being a Hawks fan, as you <laughs> right, all know, right, right. Uh, but he, but he's absolutely dynamite with uh, with Shanahan there, and and I'm 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 a hundred percent with. Uh, Big Co on the fact that his hands are just amazing. You know, he may lose a step in speed, but the way that he, um, and not just the way that he practices and does the Pilates and the yoga and the pole dancing, um, but uh, <laughs> it's good sorry. exercise. Yeah, it's great. Um, but 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 it's also in the way that he approaches the game and what he what he thinks about and how how he looks at the game. And I think his eyes have also been more developed with Shanahan. So, I mean, we always want running backs in that system and he is the running back to want in general. So you said that if Gibbs isn't there, you probably wouldn't quite look when I'm in a startup. If it lines up where I'm going to go with CMC, then I know I'm going all in that year. You know, mm -hmm. um, I don't play any redraft or, well, I, I haven't played redraft for the last couple of years now. I think don't play a lot of keepers, but obviously he's the one one in a lot of those formats. In Dynasty for me, I I look at my Dynasty team in, in two to three year segments. And I mean, you know, you can tell me CMC is going to be great this year. Yep. Great next year, most likely. Could he lose a step when he hits 30? All right, maybe. But that half step, just like Bitco was talking about Forte, I mean, that half step, he, okay, so maybe he's down in tier two or tier three for somebody. But but that's still up there, you know. That's that's still um, a great RB one on your team. So, so for me, he's he's just kind of the the real deal. Um, you know, my my ranking of Tyree Kill when we did the wide receiver show was a little bit higher, and a lot of people are scared with his age. But there's just certain players that are, you know, there's there's certain players that are uncommon, right? And I would put like Gibbs and, and players like that in that that category as as they continue on. But then there's the rares, right, or the 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 uniques or if we're talking sports card the foils right and cmc to me is just one of those like he's not your average bear so yeah um, um yeah so anyway that's well that's my spiel <laughs> i did also want to you know obviously the league has shifted in how we, we approach the running back position how how they approach it and then that trickles down to how we have to approach it um but we had a slew of guys throughout our fantasy tenure here exit early um pre-30 and, and and slow down and leave and have injuries but it seems like this next crop of guys behind them there's a lot of these guys who are still hanging on and being very productive later sports medicine is getting better everything should be on the up and up with all these guys somebody like we talk about this all the time like a christian mccaffrey who can what haven't made as much money that just clicked in my head you know like those other guys they were getting 50 million dollar contract sean alexander he got freaking paid after his mvp season and then two years later he was like i'm good yeah well you know? sh yeah sure i mean so you, you got you have guys like like christian mccaffrey and, and when you have a guy who who puts the two things together of of the want to mm -hmm. because I, the, obviously the money matters but like he's he's a football guy through and through like yeah. he wants it he loves it and when you have those kind of guys and those upper echelon players are have that mindset they can play at a, for longer because of, they're just so special like you guys have been saying if they lose a step they're still going to be just fine because the iq continues to go up they continue to learn they and and cmc obviously the speed is is great but i mean i think he can play this position you know, well until he's 31, 32. So I think you guys are all right on. Um, I have just, I had Gibbs in a single tier, so I had him behind there. And then I have him with JT because I think JT's of the same kind of caliber as CMC. We've just had a bunch of injuries here with JT. We've seen JT put up these big numbers. And I think I, I'm not scared of JT at all. I love the team situation that he's in. Um, we've seen JT, excuse me, do it before. The receiving upside maybe isn't on the quite on the CMC level, but he's a good receiver. Um, so I have JT and, and Christian McCaffrey right there. And I think that we may see the narrative and we might see these age cliffs that everybody likes to talk about so much with the data that they have change 
over these next five years and the data will eventually catch up and we'll start seeing, hey, you, you do get you can get two more years out of these elite level running backs uh, than kind of how David Johnson and Todd Gurley and, and you know, a few other guys really at Le'Veon Bell, Le'Veon re- Bell really hurt that bell curve mm-hmm. um you and know. those were the top studs and, right and to lose them and it burned yeah. everybody and, every, and then then the then the 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 nfl switched gears so mm-hmm. all that stuff i think compounded a little bit and there's been a little bit of an overcorrection and the league's obviously not valuing these guys as they once were but i think we'll see a, a small correction uh backwards a little bit uh here and there's another bigger discussion i want to have with that but we can we can table that for now so uh, Christian McCaffrey, everybody's still very high on him. I think there's two or three more years playing in a two or three year window, I think is, is kind of the best way to view it. Uh, Big D and, and McCaffrey still fits in that plan to a T. Now, if you're a bottom six, seven roster, you got no business having CMC on your team. Trade him immediately and get everything that you can. You know, yeah. it's all about you have to be good to have these guys on your team to get the 400 points to matter. If not, you're just costing yourself draft picks. Right. And we got some big time draft strategy uh, shows coming out, but you can't go through your draft and just two year window, all your picks. Right. But when it matters, you can pick your spots. You can have the Tyreek Hill and you can have the Christian McCaffrey. Preferably right. When maybe, it's somebody who could score yeah. 400 fantasy yeah. points, you have to make a little bit of yeah. a decision, you know? Yeah. Um, all right, let's keep it moving here. Next guy I think I want to talk on is is Achan Big D. You had him kind of high. Big Co. You got him reasonably high, and I, I don't I don't have him low. I got him in a tier, um, and and this is all upside. I think is is kind of why we're taking him here. I'm I'm not a thousand percent settled into this one. Sure, but you know he had had a couple of really huge games. Um, it was his rookie year. Can he stay on the field? I, I, I think I, I try not to get too bogged down with all that kind of stuff. I think he will stay on the field. I think you'll con- uh, see him continue to get up closer to that 200 weight mark as he progresses throughout his career. And he's got plenty of speed. Uh, it doesn't matter. But again, this comes down to trusting a system that I believe in and a coach that I believe in. That's basically all these guys at the top here, you know, Bijan and Brees, you know, you're just taking because of who and what they are and, and what they mean and, and that they're that that um, that OG bell cow who's just mm-hmm. going to get everything. But there's not very many of those. Jonathan Taylor falls into there, Christian McCaffrey. But then HN, you know, kind of is in that Gibbs vein a little bit more where does it need to be the lead guy? probably shouldn't be the the lead guy who has Christian McCaffrey like carries and and usage keep him fresh keep him light he he's so explosive on any given touch that I think you got to put some respect on his name and you know we're trying to make money and and win fantasy leagues Achan is a guy who I think gives you a really good chance to go out there and and have ha, be in the top X amount of percentage of, of being able to win a league if, if A-Chan can stay healthy. Mostert's 31. They did just draft Wright, but again, I'm okay with it being a backfield of Wright and A-Chan. Like, mm-hmm. that's that's okay. He's probably never going to make it up to that tier one, tier two for me, but I got him in tier three or four here because of the effectiveness that we've seen him have and the system that he's in. Uh, basically, you know, an a, 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 a nod to the San Fran system and sure what they do so hell yeah let me get some h big big co your your thoughts and we'll we'll round it out with big d on h and who's the highest well i mean it, it can be a loaded uh question of you know like you said it just it's the perfect blend of player and system and coach it just what you were saying there's there's space there's players running in every direction and you don't the defense really you cannot key in on the run game even though it's based off the run game and then they and I've one of the reasons I've one of the things that I enjoy here is the the Jalen Wright is uh, a nice piece of insurance to pick up later to double down on the system for or for your investment here. If you're picking up, you know, a uh, chan in a, in a startup or you're picking up a chan uh, trade and something like that in an existing league. Um, but like to for, for what you were saying in a game last year, he had 18 carries. In a game last year, he had 17, and the next highest was 14. So they, they weren't pumping him with volume. Mostert, if you, depending on where you look, he's 32 years old. You said 31. He's 32 on one website. Um, you know, he's not getting any younger, but he looked ridiculously good last year. If 
32. I, they're not taking it. They're not taking Mostert off the field this year. So you're not getting that heavy. He's not getting a heavier workload no matter what anyway. But there's a lot of things going around. The Miami Dolphins were like number one in snaps taken on offense with a 20 point lead, et cetera, et cetera. So like they, they are, they didn't have their, they had a lot of blowouts and stuff like that. They didn't have their foot on the pedal. A lot of games mm-hmm. and you know they took the foot off the pedal in halftime and stuff and sure you can say well there, there's more rushing but at that point you know you're leaning on some Mostert here and there the 18 carry game was that blow up against Denver of course they almost scored 70 points but 18 carries for 200 yards two touchdowns mixing in catches all the way down the, every, every game he played obviously the explosiveness is just we've never seen somebody get that number of carries like minimum 100 and average seven and a half yards a carry so is he better than any running back that's ever stepped on the field? Absolutely not. Is it, is has there been another running back in a system that might open like lanes and gaps as wide as that for anybody? Probably not. Like if you think about it, what is going on? Obviously, you know, you take a Mike, you take a um, a Shanahan running system, and you bring it over here, and you put Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle mm-hmm. in the middle of it, running crossers, et cetera, in, or in full speed pre snap motion. Right, and then you got the fastest running back in the NFL going the other way with the ball. Right, so it's uh, the may. I mean, obviously, A. Chan is to be determined if, for what his career looks like. But you can sit here and say he's probably not the best running back to ever play the game, and it's like ninety nine percent chance. But the mixture of the system mm-hmm. and his ability puts him at the tip top of anything we've ever seen because you've never seen a player get that much running steam you know like you can't there, yeah i don't know and, and i'm not saying it depends on tyreek hill but it sure as heck helps sure sure uh big d any, anything to add to the hn conversation here and and you obviously had him the highest i think yeah i have him the highest because it, you know it's it's all an upside play for him um but it's more than just upside big co kind of highlighted that but there's some stats out there like he's the only only two rookie running backs have ever posted 17 plus pp points per game on a sub 40 percent carry rate that's alvin kamara in hn catches and the, uh, yeah for catches um for in and, and so and that came from um the ff newsletter which is a, is a great little email newsletter if, if anyone but but i mean it just kind of highlights you know he led all backs on miami with 37 targets 27 receptions which was a uh, 197 yards and three touchdowns but he barely played man mm-hmm. like i mean like yeah you know his 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 speed is just off the charts According to the next gen stats, he, you know, his average speed off the line of scrimmage is 12.2, which led the NFL. The only uh, player, Christian McCaffrey, recorded more rushing yards over expected than Achan. So for me, it's like, okay, he is um, one of those like pop, one of those, uh, you know, like the the party poppers where the confetti comes out. Like he, he, you know, he can he can be one of those big blast confetti poppers, and sometimes they they dud out on you, but <laughs> but most of the time when they work, you know, it's it's a lot of fun. And and for me, he's um, you know, he's CMC light is is a way to say it. Just from his his ability to take over and win you a week is uh you know is is pretty good. So for me, he's he's closer. You know this next year if he gets on the field and he averages 60 you know 60 percent in the game like uh on average like he he might jump into that tier one for me boys like Ooh. he's 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 right there like he's i mean i'm 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 on him I, th- I think he's he's coming in uh this next year we'll see how he you know and the biggest question mark for him is is the injury is like with most backs right like if he if he, he needs this you know what is that uh best availability is you know best ability is availability yeah exactly so like that's the biggest thing for him but if he's on the field the same amount percentage as most backs he's going to outscore them and um unlike gibbs i i I trust that offense um in miami uh to to you know similar to the shanahan offense is to, to score points at the running back position and uh yeah so anyways for me it's 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 he's a moonshot and even if he doesn't hit the moon, like what was he? He was wide receiver, not sorry. He was running back 24. So he was a RB two off of, you know, one, let's see, one, two, three, That's just total four, points. five, six, giving him 24. Seven, eight, rank. Nine. Yeah. Like 10, 10 games, I think, or eight games that he actually played more than 10% of the snaps. Like, right. 
in, Obviously, in you get a RB2. seventy point game or whatever it was mm-hmm. in there. That, sure, yeah, you, know, you, but you got some big, big, big chunk games. But I mean, just the point there's is so much more to him than yeah. that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, that's the thing is it's it's not just he he's breaking off seventy five yard runs two, two or three a game. I mean, the dude is like he's electric in the short field. He can get you the first down. He can he can run um, cross patterns. I mean, he can catch um, with the best of them. So yeah, sky's the limit for me with uh, Mister. HM, the slippery dolphin. I don't know what his nickname is, so I'm just making up one. I don't know if he has one. Maybe, maybe he's he a chain. H- <laughs> yeah, a chain. <laughs> All right. Um, and then I think I think last but not least here for for these ranks, I did I did kind of want to touch on Kenny Walker for oh, a second. Can, sorry, can we just back up one one sure. second? I will say that you you had touched on on Jalen Wright. I I also think that if you're and I know this isn't this type of show, but I just want to say. Chris Brooks is also somebody that um, I'm interested in on, on, on the Dolphins to kind of back up that Moster role. So, um, you know, it, it, I don't know if Wright's going to take over as much as if, if Brooks is there. So just, yeah. just as we go along. So, yeah. And I, I, I don't, I don't hate it. I think I view Wright as more of a Moster leaving in a year or so than yeah. any trouble to, Hey, we're, what, what is this about? We're worried about a chan um, no, just they, they want to be able to. They want to run the ball. And they right. want to do it with speed. Right, and they they have yeah. an idea of what they want to do. Mostert's thirty two, like you said. So yeah, yeah. So Kenneth Walker is was would be another guy that I want to hit on, but we we can we can kind of table that for a second because I have I do have a hard time ranking him, and I think we have some some good discussion there. Um, but I don't want to tie up a terrible amount of time. Um, I got him in tier four, uh, Big D. Uh, you have him in tier three, I believe. Yeah, uh, and then Big Co's got him in in tier five with a big with a big bunch of uh guys so we can we can we'll double back on Kem walker at another time I, i've had the hard one of the harder times ranking him um and, and which tier he belongs in but i do i do think basically at the end of the day for me the biggest argument there is is hey i like sharps i think sharps is a good player and you can get sharps that's great the great part about drafting kenny walker you can grab sharps and kenny and know you lock down a, a one yeah i think talent prevails here and I think Kenneth Walk like, and I like Sharps a lot. I think Sharps is a good player. I just think Kenny Walker is so dynamic. And I know some people are tired of the dancing and yada yada yada. But you spread out this this uh, the, the the Seahawks, and and I just there's just no way you can't tell me Kenny Walker is not going to be super dynamic um, with a bit more of eleven personnel style offense. And yeah, I mean you grow and you learn. But Kenny Walker has been a bona fide stud runner since college. And I think people get a little, you know, yeah, Kenny might be doing a little extra here or there, but I mean, at the end of the day, I'm going to bet on the talent and I'm, I'm taking the talent and the explosive nature and the playmaking ability of Kenny Walker. I think Sharps is going to have some, some run, but that's why I have Kenny up here uh, because I, I just, that, that's a talent bet on me uh, for me winning, winning out the larger chunk of the rushing percentage of that offense um, and just being able to do more with his touches that was a that was a nice table of the uh, kenny walker talk well i put it on the table and you took it off the table well we we can have a longer discussion you're just not allowed to talk about it Vico. you got it bud (laughs) we we can have a longer discussion about it at a different but i just wanted to touch on a little kenny there well i i appreciate it because i (laughs) I touched on cmc for so long that damn niners running back so i appreciate you touching on the yeah the seahawk running back a little bit for me but it, it does seem like all of us have the rookies in this top 12 top 13 and i want to i want to get out of this conversation on, on that note um for me it just it really dawned on me when i was in a startup in like the sixth and seventh round of your your in these mm-hmm. area and you're like what running back am i going to take am i going to take the next guys that we're going to talk about here in a minute rashad white and cook and pacheco you certainly could but all those guys have like question. I feel like nobody's certain on those guys moving forward. No rock solid value. And what we've been seeing all off season is Brooks value screaming up the charts, even though he might not even play mm-hmm. to start the season. Um, I think Benson's a really good player and, and Connor is, is most likely going to be out of there in a year. He's 29 years old. Um, so by the back half of this season, I just feel like the value on those two guys is going to be s- surpassed a bunch of other running backs on this list and their value is going to be holding so strong, if not shot up here in a lot of people's values to a a third round startup pick. Right. 
So that's kind of why I have them rounding out those guys. You say, well, hey, Casey, they haven't even played yet. And it's like, I see the value on them, and I just see, kind of see how this year is going to kind of play out. And it feels like at the end of the year, those guys might be humming. Even if they're not, I think it's insulated. And the way I see it playing out is they are going to be getting opportunities at the end of the year and really putting a good taste into people's mouths kind of moving forward and being really excited about those two guys who can you know, be some bell cows kind of moving forward. Yeah, I don't think there's – there's no argument. I mean, obviously, Brooks is coming back from an ACL, so he's not. I don't think there's any chance he's going to be 100 percent week one. Benson's nothing wrong with him. Um, you know, with Connor, if Connor doesn't go down, there's Rashad White, Josh Jacobs, James Cook, Pacheco, Najee Harris. I expect, I fully expect all those guys to dominate those two running backs in points this year. Mm-hmm. I, I, everything you just said. I, I, there's a, without an injury um, in front of Benson and without Brooks coming in and like you know they're. Brooks could do well at the end of the season and Benson could get an injury or, you know, just take over um, half the backfield, but they're not going to just take it away. Um, you know, it's, I, I, those established veterans are going to outperform those two rookies. But like you said, on a value moving forward in when you start in September and then you fast forward to the end of December, those two rookies are most likely going to be well ahead of those other guys and val- they already are. You know, they're getting drafted ahead of right. those guys in the, dra- in, the, in the drafts anyway. Um, so why fight it? Put them up there in your rankings a little higher. And just understand that in, in your startups this year or in your existing leagues, Pacheco is probably a trade value. Or, or you know, you're going to be able to get Cook later than you should be able to get him for his value because people are going to push him down. And, mm-hmm. uh, and because of everything we just said, Brooks and Benson are going to go in front of him most likely. And, and I... And I second that i don't have any problems with it i'm take i would take jonathan brooks over to all those guys as well have them ranked higher just because of that reason right but i know that week one comes by here james cook's gonna do well pacheco's gonna do well rashad white's gonna do well josh jacobs could smack you know mm-hmm. that's I, that's what i'm signing up for yeah and i understand it when it before it starts yeah uh big d final thoughts on this round of rankings here yeah, I mean, I, I, I think you guys covered most of it. I mean, um, for Vincent and Brooks, for me, um, they kind of round out the, the those 12, 13 area just because of everything that you, you both have said. I think Vincent and Brooks this year won't probably be at the top of the top of the ranks um, come come points wise. But as we do, we we're, we're playing fantasy and then the two year time frame, three year time frame. I see Vincent and Brooks definitely jumping up. And so I think they're. I think it's a great play when you're in a startup if you're if you're productive struggling and you need some young backs i think those are two guys you could add and they're not going to add too much points to your lineup and if they do pop off you're going to have some trade value um and on the flip side you know if you're you're uh, a champion caliber team and you want to um, have some backup for later if your team's getting a little older in the in the tooth right i, I think those are both two players that you could add so so for me, it's it's not so much those players; it's the uh, position uh, value of where they're at and what they'll be taking over, um, and and also a little bit of the other players behind them. But we can we can talk. I'll table that for, for now. All right. Well, yeah, I think that's a that's a good way to to segue here. 